Hey everybody. Well, this project is going to entail you making uh, tripod forms using a cylinder. And I'll show you this whole process when we go through it. You're going to need uh, about a 7 by 12 slab. Make a template so you have it so you can cut them out. You to make two of them, by the way. One's got to be a lidded vessel, as you can see here. The other one can be a mug or a base. I'll leave it up to you. You can really nip it the shape more, but mugs are pretty simple. And you gotta decorate the surface. You can put some pattern, design, give them some theme. The whole thing must be covered with design, like you see what I did with my two. So you're also gonna need a paddle for some shaping of it. You're gonna need a wooden spoon. So if you have a little wooden spoon at home, bring that in. And a knife to cut up some stuff with. You either cut your 45s, and if you have one, if we're in class, if you're not in class, you have to cut 45 by hand, but not, you can use a 45 degree tool. And yeah, that's what you're gonna need. And maybe a couple of other sticks for some shaping, kind of pushing the clay through, shaping it, is what I recommend. And the other tools you have to kind of make these. And you're gonna first make all the pieces first, and then you're gonna design them and decorate them. So like I said, you're gonna make a lid vessel, and then the other one could be a mug, or it could be a vase, I leave it up to you. You could constrict this neck in more if you want. I'll show you kind of different ways of shaping it. But uh, yeah, you can do that, because I have taught you to make slab mugs before. So that shouldn't be a problem there. So you should be able to at least do that one, and then this one's here. And I'll show you the whole form, the whole project, everything else through this video. And you'll be able to make them. You know, let's go ahead and let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is measure out my uh, template to get my piece all, whenever I roll my slab out, I have a nice, easy way to make the square. I'm trying to measure things. Take a piece of paper, make the size you need. It's gonna be seven by 12, so the size you're gonna make. So take some paper, I'll give you some, I'm gonna measure it out, I'm gonna cut it out, hope your pencil doesn't break like mine did, and you just begin to cut it out and shape it from there. Use my quarter inch sticks, roll out my clay, keep flipping it back and over, cut out the clay I need, uh, keep rolling it out, make sure you also smooth it out before I, uh, with the rib, before I cut it out with my template. So just get the clay nice and rolled out. Once I got my slab rolled out, I put my template on top, Trace it around and I cut out my slab. Get ready to put the 45 degree angles on each side. You can use the 45 degree tool or use the knife. I'm demonstrating with the knife to show you how you use it. Put up nice to the edge of the table. I'm gonna draw through and cut it at an angle. As best you can at the 45, as best you can there. You wanna try to do the best you can, keep it at a 45. That way you have something to join the two pieces together. I cut it one way, then I'm gonna flip it over cut the other direction so when I pick up the piece roll it together they both 45 match up and that's why I blend and smooth together Now I'm gonna do with my 45s cut, I score and slip both sides, use either vinegar or slip, and then I pick it up and I'm gonna put those two seams together. I kind of squish, smooth the seams away from my hands so my fingers are cupping around that seam. Helps keep the piece somewhat round. I have to flip it over, do both sides. Use sticks, ribs, smooth them out, just make sure you brace that seam as I'm working it. Keep working it as close as I can to get as round as possible. When I do squeeze the clay though, keep that seam away from your body. I'm going to begin to uh, compress the bottom of it in. I use a rib to kind of press the sides in. I don't just squeeze it in, that'll ruin the shape of it. I just slowly begin to bring it in. Once I get it kind of in a little bit, I'm going to go score it, apply some slip, either vinegar or slip, and I kind of begin to slowly squeeze it in very carefully, very slightly. Keep using the rib, pushing it. I don't want to force it. If I force it, I'm going to distort the shape way too much. So I'm going to keep working around, get the basic shape of what I need. And together, there's gonna be little gaps. I cut a little triangle out. I can put 45 it with the knife for the 45 degree tool, and I'm gonna score and slip it into that little gap or space there. And I'm gonna take a rubber or metal rib and kind of blend it and make sure it's all well smoothed together. Once I'm doing that, I'm gonna flip it over, smooth the inside with a spoon or one of the sticks. I keep it cupped in my hand a little bit so I can feel the pressure, is what I'm doing there.
Now when I'm done and get the inside smooth, I'm making little balls of clay and make them into little points. So those are gonna go inside the little tripod areas and I'm gonna blend and smooth those in there. But I have to make little points onto them first. Once I've got them um, shaped, I cut off some of the extra clay. I'm gonna get ready to put them in there. I'm gonna kind of shove them in into those little pot areas. As you can see, my little sketch says on the right. Uh, I score and slip them and I kind of press them in there and then I use a uh, little spoon and kind of blend and smooth over them. I keep it cupped in my hand. I do definitely do not want to do this flat on the table because I really want to feel what I'm doing, kind of keep it cupped in so I kind of have a feel for what's doing. Filling these gaps and spaces is a good thing to do so it just doesn't let things get trapped in there, stuff like that, make them all nice and smooth. Once I am done uh, filling in those little spaces, I go back over with my soft rubber rib or my metal rib, kind of blend and smooth everything together back on the bottom side. Make sure there's no gaps or spaces. I really want to make sure everything's well blended, compressed together, makes the joint much stronger and less likely to crack. Now I've got everything compressed and blended in there, I'm now gonna use my wooden spoon, use the round part of it, use my hand as a brace, and begin to kind of press out that bottom, try to get it to grow and stretch out. Get it nice and round is what I'm doing there. I'm trying to kind of press it out a bit. I just kind of keep working around, keep working around until I get the desired shape I want. And then I'm gonna go back in the top, use a rib, kind of begin to compress in the top part of it so it begins to have that where it kind of compresses in. I'll flip it over and really, really keep working the shape, trying to make that uh, top come in and the bottom part flare out is what I'm trying to do. Go back in, fix it, try to round it back out a little bit. Again, go back with the spoon, keep working and shaping to get the desired shape you want it to be. Once I have the desired shape, I'm now going to begin to form the, the little ledge in there with a place for the lid to sit. I use a special little stick I made. I got a little groove cut into it and a little pointy part. And then I'm going to go back in with a flat wooden rib, kind of define that ridge more. That's where the lid's going to sit. I have to make sure it's well defined to hold the lid. Once I have my ledge, I'm going to measure to begin to make my uh, circle my lid in there so I have to cut out use a circle tool measure with the ruler and do that remember I gotta figure out the radius so therefore I can get the diameter as you can see here when I'm cutting it out filling with some clay this is gonna become my lid I'm then gonna hold it in my hand press it with a wooden spoon to begin to give it some shape and some volume so it kind of goes inwards a bit and has more so it's not flat I want to have it some depth and volume then I'm gonna use the same little uh, popsicle stick I made prior to smooth that edge out around it and kind of go around to make sure it's gonna fit smooth it out let's see how it fits press it in there make sure it's gonna fit well sit on the ledge and have a nice piece ready to go once I have everything fitting correctly and the shape I want I'm gonna get to turn it into whatever I want to here I'm gonna make it into like a, a pumpkin kind of piece so I'm marking off all my lines using a barbecue skewer to kind of line everything up getting it ready to go and that's kind of what I'm doing here. Just kind of line everything up, get the rough idea where the lines are going to be. Then I'll come back in, use a uh, loop tool to kind of carve away those lines, give it some more depth. I'm going to stop around where the legs are, so I'm going to do something else a little different with those. But kind of get my shape in there, kind of work in the shape a little bit, and everything else. Give it that look of a pumpkin. Just something different I'm doing here. You can choose whatever you want to do. I decided to make this into a pumpkin shape, kind of like a pumpkin jar. <music> I'm really making those legs stand out. I'm gonna carve around them, so a little bit different of a shape, so they kind of stand out like they're almost like coming through the skin, just kind of like the little legs themselves. So I'm going back in, carving in, working them, and all that stuff as well. Go back in with that loop tool, ribbon tool, kind of scoop away the excess clay, get the shape the way I want it to be. Just kind of reworking that shape is what I'm doing here. You know, smoothing over with a sponge, just making sure it's all kind of finished up the way I want it to be. Do the same thing with my lid, make sure the lid still fits, the lines kind of match up, kind of keep working the shape. And I'm using a little wooden stick, kind of just working the shape more and more. Get to where I want it to be as best I can. This is totally up to you how you want to finish your piece. And I'm just adding a little more texture to the little feet of the tripod, just making it kind of stand out a little bit more, like give them looks of just, I don't know, more texture. Uh, and it still makes a pattern. It's totally up to you what you want to do on this. I'm 
using a little tool here that's like a little rubber rib and a sponge kind of smooth and clean up all my lines and kind of go back in cutting some more grooves into it make it look like it's kind of all one similar piece just kind of really working the shape it's up to you what you want to do i managed some extra texture lines to it giving it some more personality making it my piece you design how you want to design it uh i don't want 20 pumpkins lidded vessels i want you to be come up with your idea if you want to, you can add clay onto it you can carve things into it it's completely and totally up to you here i'm now making the stem for my handle because you need to have a handle to get that lid off i've added some texture to it make it look the top of a pumpkin kind of bending it and shaping it remove some of the excess clay off of it give it that look at the stem of a top of a pumpkin that's how i'm going to lift it up so i'm just kind of scoring and slipping it in and going to work and design and just keep working the basic shape i'm also going to add a little leaf to the side of it and just kind of finish it off as my little lidded vessel that looks like a pumpkin Do not forget when I add that leaf on there, I have to score and slip it on so it does not fall off. Then I go back in, put the lines and grooves, give that kind of finished look. I'm even going back in, adding vines you can see, again, scoring and slipping them on. So they stay on there, it gives it a little more variation to my piece. With my lidded vessel done, it's now time to begin to work on my mug. So I have a little tripod mug here I'm going to demonstrate and show you. I've got the basic shape. I'm going to come back in with the ribs, kind of work on getting that shape a little bit better, constricting it in a little bit, uh, just trying to get the piece the way I want it to be. So I'm coming back with the ribs, kind of closing it in. So you can definitely tell where I blew it out with that spoon. And then coming back in and kind of constricting the top in a little bit, flipping it over, smoothing it, getting the shape I really want to. I think I did a better job on this one. On the shaping getting it a little bit wider and narrow at the top just more you do it the better you get at it so now one thing else gonna do with this you gotta make sure the lip is nice and smooth as you know with mugs if you have a nice round lip it's easier to drink from if you don't you really don't want to use it so i just smoothed it use a sponge keep coming around it so it's nice and round and ready to be used now once i get the mug shape done i'm going to start adding the handle to it i'm going to roll out a coil of clay like a carrot shape from thick to thin. Then I'm gonna flat it out by using my thumb and put a groove in it. You can do that if you want to. You can leave it round if you want to. I get a little bit wet, kind of press it in there, then I'm gonna cut it to shape, see how it fits on my piece, make sure it fits, then score and slip it on. I'm also gonna a little thumb groove to it as well once it's blended on. And then I make sure everything's nice and smooth. I made a little thumb rest, a little ball of clay, press it on there, smooth it, blend it. Now I'm gonna clean up my piece a little bit, make sure it's all well, nice and smooth, ready to go. The handle's really well compressed on there. That is critical and crucial. So I'm gonna blend and smooth everything on there really well before I begin to design it. Once the mug is done, the handle's on, it's now time to decorate. So I'm gonna decorate my piece. I give it kind of like a wood texture kind of feel to it, like it's a bark of a tree. I'm just going through designing it, figuring out stuff like that. I really want you to push beyond your own comfort level. The pieces are simple to make. How you decorate them makes them unique and different from everybody else. I don't want your names on them. I don't want all that stuff like that simple. I really want you to go beyond just a simple decorated mug. Really kind of make it themed kind of a mug. Give it some texture. Give it some time. You can add things onto it, carve into it. Just go beyond your own comfort level and make something unique and different. Mm -hmm. 